Hello everyone, the stream should work. Let me just wait for the video to start and I will see on YouTube if everything is working. And yeah, it does work, cool. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, after a really long break, I had a lot of things to do. I had to move to a new place and set everything up and deal with a load of different things. But uh, I am ready to stream again. So if anyone is new in here, my name is Eric and I, I do art and, and everything. And today I will continue on the challenge that I started quite some time ago. I want to redesign all the creatures from the plains or barbarian city in Heroes of Might and Magic 1, I believe. Uh, so yeah, I will be doing a Cyclope. Previously I have did, I have done a, a, a troll. There are some small things that I need to fix, like this finger or something like this, but nothing that I will worry that much about right now. And now I want to, to make a Cyclope, and this is basically a Cyclope that, that, I, that I base this entire design on. So, as always, if anyone has any questions or whatever, feel free to ask them. Uh, if anyone did any type of a painting and you would like me to see it, or give you some pointers or whatever, uh, also feel free to, to send it to me. I will just try to, to review it. You can send a link in YouTube chat. Yeah, in YouTube chat or uh, in Twitch, but no, only in Twitch because YouTube will ban any links, I believe. Uh, so yeah, uh, if anyone is new in here and if I get a new viewer or whatever, and there is also a Discord channel that is pretty much almost dead. Uh, not much is happening there, but if you are willing to like post some artworks or just maybe talk to someone, feel free to be there. Uh, even though I have time to stream uh, right now, uh, I don't really have a lot of time to, to manage the, the Discord server, so, so yeah. But sometimes something is happening in there, so, so yeah. And also, possibly today I will start recording a video about brushes, because there was a... Hello, Milbert, Milbert, Milbert. Because it was like a common... Uh, common thing people were asking me to to record about about brushes and everything so today i will start doing it uh, so soon i will possibly drop drop a new new video and everything and everything is going well all is fine thanks for asking i'm happy i finally have time to do the stuff that i like and for this guy i want to uh, separate the arm, so I want to have the arm on a separate layer so in the end it will be a bit sharper when I will paint over it, so I don't have to worry about painting like to the edge and yeah, yeah, and also after two years of using this microphone that I have right now I discovered that I can hide a, a cable so it does not like wiggle around me all the time and it's not like getting into my face or into a screen and also I finally somehow made it like I set it up so the audio quality should be better and I don't have to like scream to it so not everything I won't have to be like extra loud so yeah it's cool good to know how to use my gear after like two years it's something I guess but yeah and uh, quite possibly I will have much more time to stream like generally because I moved to a new place and now I have just much more time I, I don't have to worry pretty much about anything in terms of like audio I mean uh, availability of space and time I can just focus on on doing what is necessary and painting and practicing and doing art and everything so yeah and also how are you me blurred because i have not seen you or ride you no how to say it reading wrote what is the past tense of reading uh, i haven't read you for a long time yeah it's hard to say i hear since I am reading, but but yeah, 
how are you what's new oh and also for this guy i am just going from top to the bottom and i will just like do this several times so i will just try to render for example the arm nicely then i will move a bit lower a bit lower a bit lower and after everything is like done in this let's say batch then i will just go from top to the bottom once again i just want to see how how this type of process works and if it's okay and also i left some of the lines as you can see them some of the line art i connected it with the character because i want to make sure that i go over everything so that i don't really um, miss any any area and keeping the lines basically force me to paint over everything because the lines will be visible and also sometimes they are really helpful sorry for the spins because when i paint over them uh, slightly they give me a bit of a darker value that i usually need when i'm doing the edges and everything so yeah hello mikoi also a long time no no read so yeah it's actually really good to be back to doing those stuff. I have been doing a lot of different cool things in my workplace, but I was starting to miss uh, all the, the hero creatures and everything, heroes creatures and everything, and just doing some personal thingies without like worrying that much about the quality and everything, which is really cool, really refreshing. It definitely will be a good thing to to do and yeah for for the stories because now nowadays i basically only live with the like transporting everything and moving to a new place uh, i finally managed to adjust the place so it's possible to live in here it's not the most comfortable at the moment because i have to sleep on a mattress i don't have a bed yet and you need to flush a toilet with like a water from a bucket because the toilet is not fully connected, but it's cool. It's slowly getting there. So I really can't wait to, to finish everything up. So the, the place will be fully like prepared and ready to, uh, to stream and to live in and to basically do stuff. It will be great. Yeah, the Twitch is always problematic. I have no idea why. Twitch. Let me check it. Because recently, uh, recently, e -e -e -e, when I have been streaming to Twitch, it just cuts. Yeah, I have no idea why. It just cuts the video uh, in half. Like it stops sharing it. Maybe there's something in the settings streams. No, it should work. I can't change anything right now, so I won't mess up the. I won't mess up the YouTube video because I don't want it to to get doubled and everything. Mm, but I will have to write to to Streamlabs uh, for for the assist because it's just not working. Do know why? Ah, oh, it's getting well. It's like almost healed. So if someone did not see, I managed to cut off the fingertip of my finger with a knife, like this paper knife or something like this. When I was laying flooring with a friend of mine, it was a last piece of a floor for a saloon. And I managed to cut my hand instead of the, instead of the floor, instead of the panel. And yeah. I started bleeding like a pig. Uh, the friend of mine actually is a first aid type of a guy, so he just passed me up and everything is cool, but yeah, it, it is working. So yeah, hello, Boss, Boss GFX. It is working. And actually the, the part of a finger that I managed to cut off, uh, like I just kind of glued it together. Yeah, it was fine. I don't think I can show it on stream though. Uh, but I like I left the piece of a finger in like two millimeters, like piece of a skin, so it was not like fully detached. 
like I mean just the just the fingertip and I just like tied it with a bandage and then I uh, like glued it with a paper tape and when it was like holding together it just the, the blood connected the, the dead tissue to a new one and it basically served as a kind of like a plaster, like a protective type of a layer of a thingy. Now it's like all dried up and it's slowly starting to fall off because the, the new fingertip um, grew underneath it. So yeah, but it definitely was helpful to, to make the healing much faster. Uh, so yeah, it, it is cool. The finger is working, I already been uh, at the gym with it. It's not bleeding. I'm not leaving the blood trails everywhere. But I did leave a blood trail on outside the, the house, on a door to the building. I was opening the doors to throw up some, some trash. And I saw a blood like trail going down on the doors and I was like, whoops. I need to take care, a better care of this thing. So then I used the paper tape to, to patch myself up. And it was working. But a friend of mine had to lay down the last piece of floor because I was unable to. I was just sitting and like trying to not bleed. And I was really surprised how much blood a finger can like give. Yeah, it, it should work. Fortunately, I managed to not cut off the entire finger. I only cut off the fingertip. Yeah, I can show it to you. Uh, oh, it's like this. Nothing terrible, but I was really surprised how much blood uh, came off it. Came off of it. Uh, I was like, ble I, uh, every time I felt uh, my heart like pounding, like uh, pumping blood, with every single like pump, uh, it was basically like releasing a lot of drops of blood and everything. And I started like bleeding after half an hour or something like this. Uh, like I, I felt it stopped or it managed to like coagulate or however to, to say it. And for a solid 30 minutes, I, I was constantly like just dripping blood, which as I said, is, is quite surprising. I, I know there's like a lot of blood in fingers and in hands because they are like, like you touch with them. So they need to be sensitive, but it kind of exceeded my expectations. But I'm still there, so it means I have not died, most likely. So yeah, other than that, everything is cool. And the only also story of the house is the developer, the one who built the entire building, managed to fuck up the, the ceilings. So as far as I know, the words, they did not apply the binding agent before painting the ceiling and they painted over the dust, like after uh, grinding the, the something that you put on a ceiling and they just painted the dust and it makes the paints fall off the, the ceiling. And I unfortunately already painted like everything in the toilet with like the ceiling in the toilet, in the bathroom with like a special type of a paint and it fell off, which kind of like annoyed me because it was like, apart from the fact that it was a bit more expensive paint, but I had to mix the colors on my own. So it will be really hard to get the exactly same tone, the same hue. And so, yeah, it's really, really fucking annoying. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's only seven seven years of bad luck, so. But it, it does happen. I don't remember if I ever like destroyed a mirror or. Oh yeah, I did. I actually did. When I was much younger, I was playing with a dog of mine, uh, Axel, boxer, a really cool dog, and he was afraid of a cat, and he just ran into a mirror, and he just like smashed it completely. The cat didn't give a shit, as cats usually don't give a shit about stuff like this. But the dog was terrified and was afraid to go near mirrors from from now on for a really long period of time. 
it was actually kind of funny of him to be like this sensitive and yeah so that's cool yeah and also i don't remember the last time i have been at any like party party recently i feel like all my friends and myself included we are just too lazy to party and everyone is like okay for beers and see ya and we will just take a nap because we are like too old at the moment and also a lot of people have like a lot of different things on their heads so it's there's no really a lot of time to like party properly so yeah oh that's that's nice so it's not seven years of a bad luck then <laughs> And also for the Twitch not working, it's kind of fucking annoying because I pay for the Streamlabs OBS mostly to be able to stream on a Twitch and YouTube at the same time. I don't know even I don't even know if it's like legal in terms of like Twitch or whatever. But the fact that it's not working is kind of annoying. I will have to write them to them to get a refund or whatever or to fix fix their stuff. Or I need to just update the software. Because I I have not been streaming for a real long period of time, so maybe this is the case. So if you are still there, Miblert, was the stream working for at least a moment or was it not working at all on Twitch? Because maybe maybe they banned me or something like this. Then I will just ask for a refund. And also they made a new platform for streaming, like Trivo or something like this. I will also to maybe try to go in there to stream something in there since, since it's a new place. So I might try as well to stream in there. And for the plans for today, I want to like finish the hands on this guy, or to at least like, proceed with them to quite advanced type of a state, so they will look somewhat, somewhat finished or polished or whatever. And to do something about the chainmail because I see the the cluster fuck I have done in here. So most likely I will need to do some serious paint over or photo bash over thingy. Huh, this is weird. This is... Hmm. Maybe the bitrate is messed up or something like this. Because I used to change some... Uh-huh. Ah, so most likely the Streamlabs problem. Thanks for the info. It's good to good to know something like this. I will just try to to fix it before the the new stream hits. And also for the hands on this guy because I I was not really talking a lot about. It looks bad. I need to stop zooming in so much. Uh, I kind of want his hands to be a little bit off in terms of like the shape and the anatomy and everything because these guys are not really bright in terms of like general possibilities of their minds they're just on the more on the stupid side and I kind of wanted them to be stupid to the point where for example they can detach their fingers with like the the laser in the eyes because they shoot laser from the eyes so i can imagine if you have like a baby cyclop and it just like randomly randomly shoots the the laser out out of his face out of its like eyes there is a high chance it will like damage its hands or like amputate a part of a finger so I kind of wanted the, the hands to be kind of like disfigured or burnt. So for example, some hands, like the hands will be just like shorter, deformed and everything because they like took a lot of beating uh, while the, the guy was young. 
and also because this is like a pretty big type of a creature uh i also expect from something that is like this big to be a little bit more on the deformed side so yeah especially since this is like a barbarian type of a city so yeah he can have stupid hands. Yeah, he actually had a, a yellow eye, so I wanted to give him like a proper yellow eye. Actually, the, I really like this color scheme, this like subtle greenish blue or something like this with this, this yellow combination. It looks nice. Also, it means that if you have like yellow eyes, as far as I know, that the liver is damaged quite heavily uh, if it's like this bad. So. This coloration to the eyes means the the apple will not keep a doctor away. You need to to visit the doctor if if your eyes are like yellow ish. But I also felt it will look much better than than a normal like let's say white part of an eye because again he he shoots lasers from his eyes, which is kind of goofy. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, the same friend of mine that was patching up my finger, uh, he once told me that usually when he makes a fish, like when he prepares a fish, especially when we are like outside of the city on some like parties in like a hut or whatever, uh, we dared him to eat the the eye of a fish, like the raw eye, and he did it, which is kind of disgusting. But on the other hand, I learned that the not retina, the how to call it, this glossy part, the oh my, the lens, uh, the the lens is really crunchy, or a part of a fish eye is extremely crunchy, and I actually could hear him like just chew on it like i can i could hear a crack of of this part of an eye it was really disgusting oh cornea right cornea this is the word that i was missing yeah so it is crunchy it is really crunchy it turns out so if you are ever going to eat a fish eye yeah it will crunch a lot <laughs> yeah, for this guy I need to remember that the light is from the top left how I intended it so I need to be truthful to to the light source so yeah also I should experiment a bit more with the brushes because I feel the one that I'm usually using for rendering everything is not really doing that well anymore. I feel my needs kinda like increased with time. So I will need to like test some of the other brushes that I have to to get something better for rendering. Mm -hmm. And also this is one of the cooler uh, things that I always liked and that I'm kind of trying to learn right now. Not maybe actively, but when I'm painting or rendering something I'm trying to like include it. Is I have noticed a lot of Asian artists, especially from China, uh, are really not rendering everything that much. Uh, they are just using really precise hues of colors and they tend to have their colors really spot on and it kind of makes the entire painting look 10 times better. And you don't actually have to paint that much because you can get away with like a lot of small like inaccuracies in terms of like details. But since the colors and light is like really nice and suggestive, you basically get a really, really good painting with like a really good quality. And this is kind of what I'm trying to to learn right now 
Uh, it's a bit the opposite of what I was usually doing because I always kind of enjoyed like scribbling and just going into the details. Um, but I kind of think I should really work on understanding of light and everything in the form and whatnot. So I kind of feel it's lacking a lot. As far as I know, uh, I mean, the first thing is, uh, for example, China is, is really big and compared to the rest of the world, you have like a lot of Asians, like generally, but the possibilities of an art schools are still quite similar, for example, as in Europe. So of course they will be able to like take much more students and everything because most likely the, the places are just much bigger. But yeah, there is this famous photo. Let me let me search for it. Uh, when they have art tests to to a school. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. So basically this is how the artists in as far as I know China looks like this is how many people are there so it's like I don't know possibly thousands per people per place so they just have to be really good uh, to compete with everyone else and since the competition is that big uh, in their place I I don't really wonder like it's not a mystery that a lot of them are just good and I can imagine even the ones that are not like passing the exams. Uh, I do believe they are usually much better than a lot of artists, for example, in Europe. So like, let's say in this field type of a game or, or something. And the other thing that I noticed is they are really structured with everything they learn. They always have this like deep understanding of everything. So there's not a lot of guessing. Uh, it's like a really solid understanding of anatomy, perspective, fundamentals and everything. They, at least this is like my, my observations that I, that I made that they just really hone their, their basics. And then it pays off because if you know your basics, then you can do everything much, much faster. In my case, in terms of like digital art, I'm mostly uh, self-taught in the sense that I was not, uh, when I was starting out for like, let's say the first five or something like years, I was not really, I did not have a teacher that taught me the color theory and everything. I was like rediscovering those stuff on my own with the books and tutorials and whatnot. Uh, so I know like in those fields, I'm really lacking a lot of, a lot of knowledge and everything, uh, but well, I, I have to, to work with what I have and, and yeah. And I do believe if, for example, I would attend some sort of an atelier or whatever where you will just get a proper training then I will most likely make more progress in the quality of my works in like I don't know a year than in the past 10 years oh yeah but honestly uh, in my opinion just also watching like just how they do their art is uh is just like enough like i don't understand a single thing in, in chinese language i used to learn it for like a week with duolingo so i had the general understanding of like two or three phrases or sentences uh, but i decided i like i just said it it's too much uh, but i feel like watching just how someone works is is enough yeah let me show you a thing mm. uh, 
this is high in Mandarin. So uh, now you know one word, hi. This is a really high quality mean. The one that kind of like makes people really stay away from you for a longer period of time. But it is worth it. I'm always pr proud to show this one when there is an occasion. But yeah, other than that, uh, I also feel that they do have much more discipline. And most likely this is just a cultural thing. Again, I have no idea. Maybe it's not true. This is what I just think based on, I don't know, different documentaries and everything that I have seen about like Asia, China and Japan and whatever. Uh, I do believe they are just like more, more willing to put a lot of work into what they do. Because as far as I know, they don't perceive work and everything as we, for example, Europeans do. They, they have a different approach approach to it so they they seem to yeah they seem to be willing to, to spend much more energy learning a lot of things and even for the stereotypes like the the memes about the the father that or the just the jokes like that that the asian kid needs to have like a plus on everything otherwise it's like not worthy and even a plus is not good enough or with the memes that uh at your age i was two years older type of a stuff it just kind of shows the the pressure of the environment so i do believe it like contributes to to the fact that they are just willing to put more hours into it and the fact that there are just like much more of them so the the competition is just bigger so you cannot like be decent if you want to outrun your competition so yeah it sounds kind of hard but i do believe this is like the truth this is a really competitive type of a thing but also extremely friendly usually the vast majority of artists as far the the one that I know know about uh, are really helpful and cool people and are really willing to like sacrifice their time to to help a fellow artist out. In this case, I was painting on the same layer as the hand in here, but I want to like detach it and connect it because there's like no overlaps, and I want to be able to remove some parts from the character. Mm. Mm. But yeah. And also this is one of the things like one could say it's like on my bucket list in a sense like i don't plan dying or anything in the near future but you can't really plan this type of a thing but one of the things that i always wanted to do is to go to like a, this proper type of an atelier where where i will have this like let's say old master like standing above me forcing me to do some like hollywood type of a shit stuff with drawings and art and everything to like replicate a, an apple for like 100 hours or whatever or to i don't know like in the movies to wash a hallway and then i will be worthy of like touching a pencil or whatever it will be really cool to have something like this like this let's say master apprentice type of a relationship with in a school it would be cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not that hard to, like, achieve this dream. It's just, like, saving some money on the site and just, like, moving to Russia for, like, a year. 
Uh, and, and yeah, they, as far as I know, they have like turbo good ateliers. They always were good at art. So, and most likely I could understand the vast majority of the things that they would say since I am from Poland. Uh, even though I don't speak Russian, like I can get the idea on what they are talking about. And yeah, and I do believe a lot of Russians at the moment speak English, so most likely it won't be a, the language won't be as big of a barrier. As for example, a Chinese language would be because I won't be able to learn Chinese. It's way above my league. But yeah, like going to an atelier, just living like a monk, eating nothing, and just drinking vodka to get your calories and everything. Because it turns out the vodka is extremely caloric. Like it has a lot of calories. It's empty calories, but well, energy is energy. So, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, and yeah, and to just like get some like commissions and whatnot, or I don't know, win a lottery, simple stuff. But the commissions will definitely will would be helpful to like sustain. To help survive the, this type of a trip. And also one of the schools that I always wanted to go is the VATS Atelier. Because like one thing is it's in the US. So it will be cool to visit the US one day. But the second thing is a lot of artists that I really admire uh, are there. So I would really love to get some classes with Eric M. Gist, for example. And actually, as far as I know, Proko used to study there, and he was a teacher for a while in there. Yeah, it will be nice to just like go this type of a, to just take this type of an approach. Just go balls deep into learning. Because again, for example, for me, I, I really like to learn new stuff, but... Uh, like I have this tendency to being like let's say a jack of all trades, so jack of all trades and master of nothing. So I'm I like to be I, I like to know and be able to do a lot of things, but in the end it like ends up in me not being able to draw a proper human, even though I have been learning how to draw for a really long period of time. But I can do a lot of different things, so it will be cool to specialize a bit more, but, but yeah. And for the learning, yeah, I, I do enjoy learning a lot of new things, but you will always find an excuse to not learn something. And this is what I always say. One of the reasons why I started streaming, because it will allow me to learn on my own with the things that I do like with the topics that I enjoy and with the topics that I that I like. <laughs> but it's also hard to like maintain a proper balance between uh, learning and let's say life because again, for example, I could just like be in a total learning mode and everything, but it's exhausting to the point where at some point, you just don't want to, to do stuff like this. Like mental health is also important, but on the other hand, the like, uh, what is the word? Not explaining, not arguing. Mm, the word was yeah, it could be explaining. No, it's just not the word. Excuse. Uh, to excuse like myself with stuff like this, like to keep a mental health, like sleep well and everything. Also, would work to some degree, but won't, won't increase my, let, let's say, drawing or painting skills. Like, in the end, you have to practice all this stuff to just get better. It, you have to make some sacrifices to to be able to do it. Mm. 
but yeah it's like a different journey Jour journey yeah different journey for for everyone everybody has to like go through with it with like their own pace so you cannot like, hurry it up some folks will like learn everything that they need to learn in like a year or two and they will be like perfectly fine and thriving artists some will just like learn the same thing in like or will never learn the same thing in after like 10 years and there's just like nothing you can do with it and the predisposition also is important for those type of things and this is also one of the things that I never like agreed upon with many people because there is the saying that the talent does not exist you just have to work you will achieve what you want to a degree it is true like you need to work if you want to improve but I always thought like you need to have like a talent to just sit on your ass and just try to learn stuff to paint and everything it, it takes uh, a dedication a lot of dedication that as far as i know a lot of people won't won't be able to to have or won't be able to commit to it because yeah learning art is really uncomfortable in the long run because you constantly will be reminded about the stuff that you cannot do and really rarely you will be like rewarded like by your brain or whatever for the stuff that you can do because the vast majority of the times you will feel like well why I can't do this why I can't do that why I can't paint yeah it's just just some people are better at processing information and some and some people just process information better at a faster rate so so it's definitely true in my case for example it took me a really long as time to like understand for example the ellipses and everything but when it clicked with me when i think i understood them the way i understand them now and yeah i, I don't really have a lot of problems with ellipses and everything uh, I, it literally felt like a like something would click just click in my brain like physically i just felt the something just doing in my head and yeah but i also remember the days when i thought i was understanding the the ellipses and everything and it turns out i did not uh, and that i just couldn't do the most basic thing i remember in the times when I just started drinking alcohol and everything because I started quite late uh, because I was learning how to draw uh, when I was like younger I remember like one after like one party I got really drunk and the next day I was so extremely hungover I decided I would just draw a bit like for the hangover maybe like working or whatever would kind of get rid of it and the hangover was so bad uh, I just couldn't draw a circle like I was absolutely trashed and devastated like my body was trashed uh, after that party and for the love of God like for for the love of mine I just couldn't draw a circle like a proper ellipse like my brain just couldn't understand it I had so much problems with focus and everything and at that day I was like, okay, this is the opposite of the clicking in my brain. Now I feel like every system is just shut down. I won't achieve a lot today. So it does happen. But with the drawing, it it's really easy to spot if someone just skipped on, on something. In terms of like topics and, and what they do and how they hide their imperfections in art. So,
Yeah, my bad thing this this fella is getting along nicely. Yeah, but even for, for stuff like this, I because as I said many times, I usually ask my friends for the critique and everything, but it would really be cool to like get a critique from someone who is just like this hardcore type of a uh, old master type of a painter guy who just understands how everything works in terms of art or like 99% of art how it works and could just like pinpoint like all the small things that just are lacking it would be extremely cool to to have someone to to, to do something like this <laughs> I didn't start to paint on the wrong layer. I'll just roll with it, I guess. I forgot how speaking for like the entire hour. How Mm, how exhausting it is. I'm already kind of tired. And there are still a lot of things to do because I need to get back on the track with all the streaming and everything to readjust myself to it because after such a long break, because I don't know, it was like way over a month. And I feel extremely rusty. Sometimes, uh, really sometimes, uh, I have some sort of an old version or HUD. I think I removed it by accident. Uh, but I always wanted to learn it. This is like one of the things that I always say. I, this year I will learn ZBrush. I said every year for the past like six years or seven years. And I don't. Because there's always something other worth learning but sometimes I do use like I have the idea of how to use it how to start with it if someone would just tell me to sculpt something to a degree I would be able to like sculpt it and I do have some knowledge on the technical aspects of it so how to fix some problems or the common stuff but by any means I'm not even close to to be able to call myself a sculptor or to be proficient oh, in ZBrush. Not the best I would name myself like the really or not like the the advanced turbo amateur. So I know the UI. I don't get lost in the UI, which is already a big step in ZBrush as far as I know. But by any means, I'm not a sculptor. Generally, the biggest advantage of 3D for concepts and everything is the fact that you don't have to draw or redraw the shit from all angles. So you just make like a quick sculpt. And yeah, let me show you actually, because it might be helpful. Mm. I will just open a 3D code and I hope everything won't crash because usually for like a quick sculpts I, I use 3D code. And display capture, yeah, this is display capture. So yeah, I can start with like a sphere. And the thing is, if you have like the most basic understanding of whatever that you are doing, so for example, I would 
be doing the the cyclop that I'm doing like in there. And I want to just experiment with it. The cool thing is uh, I can really quickly just just do it. I can see how it will look like. So where is the sphere? So yeah, I can increase it and yeah, I will make it bigger. So the eye is in here. Whoops. And let's use more move. Yeah, and the, the biggest advantage of this is, for example, if I would be extremely like proficient in 3D, so for example, I could like model everything really quickly, pose the characters, uh, give them clothing and proper material, then I would be able to do the same painting of this character that I'm doing right now in a matter of like, let's say several hours, because I could just model him, render him, and then I could just paint over it, like fix the a lot of the stuff uh, in 2D. So it will save me a lot of the time. And as you can see, uh, in this case, if I were to make a concept like, let's say for a game or whatever, uh, I can really quickly test different stuff. So for example, if I want the neck to be wider, what happens if I add a draw or whatever? What happens if I move this to the sides? How it will look in different light setup? Or shaders, I can change the shader. Or if I would to make a like a statue or whatever, how it will behave, how it will look when it's angry. So it just gives you a lot of possibilities to make something faster and cooler. And so yeah, but this is also a different software. Uh, 3D code is cool, but uh, I would say it's it's not comparable to ZBrush because it's like a different different type of a thing. It, this is voxel, so it's basically like a 3D pixels. And ZBrush, I would say, is still much better for for stuff like this because it's really easy to to kill this the the 3D code with with like too, too heavy of a file. But yeah, for example, for this guy, uh, if I could model him quickly without any problems, so let's say I could spend an hour on modeling him, like even like a really basic skeleton of, of it, then I would totally go for it. And then I can just like paint over it here and there, place him in a proper environment so I will get I won't have to think about all the reflections and whatnot. Uh, is it good that I have to think about it? Yeah, but it also can be a bad thing because uh, sometimes when you like use a lot of tricks to achieve a certain thing, you will just lose a lot of like it will. Mm, I also kind of lean to the to saying that. If you draw something, it means, and it looks good, it means you really understand it. Uh, and the more I work in a place where I work right now, the more I'm like, yeah, it's good to know like the basics of the software, but in the end, 99% of the things I need to be able to draw, uh, I, I can just rely on, on like tricks and everything. You just have to draw the stuff. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Mostly I use Rhinoceros 3D because it allows me to really quickly do some geometry mockups and stuff like this. And also because it's really intuitive for me. Uh, I just like the, the logic behind Rhino because you just type what you want to, to do and the program pretty much does it. So if you want to just chamfer some edges or like fillet them and just type chamfer edge and hamfer or whatever to say it. And, and it just does exactly this. So yeah, for, for stuff like this, I definitely use a lot of 3D in work because uh, even for like a simple stuff, sometimes I'm just not sure, for example, uh, how a Powell drone would look like from a certain angle. So I can just like model a really simple Powell, Powell drone or whatever geometry that I need. And I will just rotate it in a, like I will draw a box around it and I will just rotate it in a box. 
so I can look at the geometry in the context of of a, of a cube, which makes the entire thing much easier to understand because, yeah, I can just like see what I need to do. Uh, in here, since this leg is in the shadow, I want to add a reflected light from the sky, so a bit of a blue hue uh, for the of the environment. I do believe it. It will make it look much better. Later, I need to find a reference of this area because there are some like muscles, and I don't really want to place a reference of this area in the stream. Uh, that's, I guess, quite easy to understand why. I am not sure how how the muscles in there work. Oh yeah. And also one of the reasons why I want to learn more how to just paint. Because in the end it's just like faster. I used to really think that ooh, all the 3D and whatnot is a time saver, and yeah, it is to a degree. But if you know how to just paint something or sketch something quickly, then you are just good to go. Like you will be able to do 99% of the things that they will ask you to do, or at least this is this is in my case. If you can just like if you are good at photo bashing and just you have a solid fundamentals then you will do, do almost everything of course some things just should be done in 3d because it just makes zero sense in doing them like manually so for example like painting a chain mail would make zero sense at all yeah he is super fast this is also one of the reasons why he is one of the top artists in the industry uh, but yeah, but his fundamentals are also like crazy good. It's not like he's fast because he he's just like flashing through everything. Uh, he has like outstandingly good fundamentals, so he does know how to draw. He does not how to paint, and he's not using the the software to replace his abilities or to. Hide, to allow him to hide uh, his weaknesses he is just using the software to like speed up the process to supplement his work because I believe everything that he does uh, with the software like let's say for, with a blender or pretty code or whatever he would be able to do without the, the set software it's just like a time saver for him so it makes sense but since for example in my case uh, there's no way I could pull out, pull off some things without the software that I'm using. Uh, I would also, like, I. this is why I need to train uh, more, because my fundamentals are not strong enough for me to be able to pull off, like, all the crazy stuff. I really do enjoy the brush that I'm using right now. It gives like this really nice looking texture. And it nicely fits to the, like it, it does this really nice thing to the surface that I paint, like this kind of jittery edge or whatever. Really nicely breaks up the, the boring flatness of all the surfaces. Bend the knee. And I'm again painting on the wrong layer. So I won't but I won't care that much about it. And also one of the reasons that I always recommend it for artists to use 3D is the fact that you will just understand the geometry much better if you will just wiggle with a 3D object in, in 3D space. 
you can just like rotate the same shit from 20 different angles you will understand how the geometry behaves uh, even if you don't want to to understand it you, your brain will just like get used to it and also even by looking you will be much better at guessing like to making at making educated guesses on for example how will the surface like behave in this and that condition and like your brain will be already familiar with it so you will just need to like really dig dig into it so it can give you like the answer that you you might seek but yeah using 3d is definitely turbo helpful with with 2d artworks again you can just Yeah, no problems. Just send a link. I uh, on Facebook, so I won't have problems to open it if if Twitch is not working. Oh yeah, chill. Let me save this bad boy. Tell me when it's up, and then I will go look for it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me open it uh, in here. Uh, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, the thing is, the first thing that kind of I can see is this teeth look a bit weird. It's like it does not look like it's placed in the perspective so for the breasts as far as i know usually it's better to approach it the way that you will for example draw a clavicle and the this frontal part of a breastbone or whatever you can just make do something like this and then you will just like i don't know mark arms and mark like a basic shape of a muscle and everything and then you will can like attach the the thing uh in here so if you are going for like something a little bit more like saggy because i can imagine you, this is kind of what you meant by it you just kind of need to get the the shape right and this is also one of the topics that is really often covered by a lot of asian artists because they they seem to draw a lot of like manga and everything and uh, they often are really focused on breast areas so there are like a lot of tutorials on how to draw it, but I this is one of the things that I would keep in mind. Uh, for this entire area in here, definitely I would start for a reference because now the delta it is like stupidly big. So like this this flap skin in here does not really make a lot of sense. So if the clavicular you can imagine to be like somewhere in here, then like the basic structure just feels feels really off because the, the tits are pretty much on the uh, on the stomach so if I would try for example to to draw the like the skeleton on this this guy it would kind of give me like this type of a thing it's really off I would say in terms of like the structure 
because as again the chest is like really collapsed and everything and for example the pelvic area also like the, the spine will be like yeah it just like feels odd the, the entire chest area just feels odd it feels kind of kind of off so one of the things that you could do uh, before starting to to draw the entire character is to like literally draw like yourself a simple skeleton where you will just make sure that maybe let me draw it on a white background and with blacks mm -mm 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 -mm. just try to draw like stuff like this because this way you will make sure the the geometry is actually fine or finer so or stuff like this the a bit wider hips and let's say the even the neck is going like this and then the head even if the proportions will be like off because you, you can make them purposefully off something like this and this will kind of allow you to check the the geometry basically before you commit to anything because one of the problems that you will face over and over again is just not checking what you are doing and then it will like bite you in the ass later because you will just struggle uh, with like reworking everything over and over again and not really knowing what is wrong so usually try to go from inside out you can even draw it like as a really stiff skeleton like a stickman so just still try to think about this lines as a 3d objects but try to orient them like like lines and just add a sphere so let's say like like could look like this and this like could be this and just then uh, add a volume to it so try to imagine what is the direction the object is like facing and just try to, to combine the the basic shapes for it so it will allow you to to draw everything a bit better and for the rest uh, use some references for the trees because this is like kind of tree 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 kind of boring i do believe you can find more interesting background and also it's a kind of cool cool stuff that you can do just go to a forest or whatever take a picture and just try to add a character to to the already existing picture or just paint or draw the the environment based on the photo and then add a character uh, so yeah design wise this looks okay uh yeah this is this hood type of a thingy and horns the rest is quite quite casual so but i can imagine this being a monster in like i don't know a witcher or whatever or something like this it has this feeling to it but the structure is definitely but the structure is definitely the most important thing to to fix in here and even the stuff like this like this kind of shows that you know that the branches are growing on the trees but you are don't really know how the branches grow on the trees and how the tree actually looks like so this is one of the things but yeah uh, honestly i feel it will be much easier for you to to keep it as a sketch and to try to make like let's say a proper version of it where you can like decide uh, and fix a lot more stuff because you will be just like really uh, yeah you will be basically torturing yourself with with trying to fix it because a lot of the stuff will will need to to be fixed same with this guy uh, i i also feel like this arm is a little bit too far away from the chest it's like um there there are some problems but i guess i will just paint him first and then i will just move him uh as it is because yeah this arm should be a bit a bit closer uh or i will add like a bulge on a stomach and everything 
you know, just a lot of the things that always can be improved. But from my personal experience, sometimes it's just better to like admit to a failure or scrap it and just do it like over and over again. Or just try to, again, like combine the knowledge and uh, use a 3D to... Oh, nice. Yeah, I wanted to, to start with Procreate, but I have no, no time at the moment. I need to buy different things. But you can also try to pose a character from like a simple boxes in Blender, for example, just to get the idea of the perspective and the proportions and everything and the foreshortening and whatnot. And again, the more you will spend in 3D placing boxes and trying to figure things out, most likely the better you will get at just at the geometry because you will just understand it in a bit different way. So in this case, it's like a win-win. Now, if I were to start teaching someone again from like a scratch, how to draw or how to paint, uh, there's no way I would make them do it without learning the 3D tools also. Uh, because like, yeah, the 3D just really helps to visualize a lot of the problems that you will face. Because in 3D you can just see. Yeah, I do it all the time. Like vast majority of the times when I do something, like even professionally, for example, recently I have been, I, I can't say what I have been doing exactly, but I have been doing some, like let's say machines. And okay, I can draw a machine in perspective. Uh, but there's like zero sense in me drawing like a wheels and circles and spikes and everything in perspective, like to, to make it all like hand drawn. Uh, okay. For sketches and for like early designs, it's all fine. Then it's, it's all okay. But if, for example, the sketch is approved, uh, I can just prepare a simple 3d base for myself pose a model as I want it to, to draw it, I can check it and validate it if, if the angles look correct, if it looks interesting from different angles and whatnot, or what is the, the in-game view. Uh, I can render uh, it with like a really simple material. So for example, I know this is wood, this is steel, this is whatever. And I will just like prepare uh, a reference for myself for 3D. So yeah, using 3D as references is, is more than fine. Uh, even for stuff like this, uh, I sometimes, let me also show it to you. Mm, display capture. So for example, for this guy, I could easily do, maybe I will even be able to do it like this. Oh no, I need to take a new guy. Don't save it. So I want the posable one. Whoops. So uh, how it was working. Let me. Whoops. This is the thing when you switch software. Oh, this was the button. So I can really make a really simple like pose for him. That will be somewhat similar to what I have uh, for the Cyclops. Oops. The preview for this guy is, uh, in the software is a bit odd. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's something like this. So he is kind of more hunched to the front and this arm is not really going like this, like that. Yeah, so I have, for example, something like this. And is there something that resembles skin? There is. Uh, let me take the entire root. Can I apply it? Mannequin upper body. Do I have to do everything manually? 
apply to visible yeah so for example this is like a really similar skin tone for for the dude that i have and for example i can rotate or move the head or no not the head i don't want the head uh, i would like to have the heels i can move a leg uh, choose like a rusty metal something whatever the, the material that i like mm, this actually will be helpful in the thing that i'm doing right now uh, and for example on the arm i will choose something that kind of looks like the the cloth that i have and on the chest again something like this and if i will go to here no not here here no this is references oh this is the environment so if i would have uh, like an hdr with 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 uh can i add an hdr in here yeah let me actually download an hdr that will be similar to to what I have in here, HDR planes, no, HDRI, because uh, I just need to have uh, an environment that that will have like a similar color scheme, so this way I will have a better reference for for the colors and whatnot. I can make. I can understand it better then, but I just need to to find it. Uh, road, road, road. So it will take me a while to just scroll through everything. But yeah, let's say plans field. Mm, sunny field, sunny field. Dry field. Okay, it, it will work, download, let me go back to 3D code, let me just add new panorama, download, HDR, no, I don't want to normalize it. Mm. Yeah, so this is this. Now it's loading, so let's see if it won't crash. So I just gave him a file with like a, with the new environment. And if I will click at anything now, it will definitely crash because 3D code likes crashing. <laughs> no, come on. You can do it. Yeah, it, it managed to chug it. And where is the, the cursor? OK, it works. So now, as you can see, can I? Uh, how do I unblur the background? Yeah, now, as you can see, this is the the panorama like a field type of a thingy oh yeah this is this yeah so this is basically the environment i put him into it's not identical but it's like let's say similar so and now for the colors edit current object shader settings so the color my dude is a bit more like orangish and a bit darker. Oh. Okay, I will just adjust him in the Photoshop. But the thing is, so let's go here. As you can see, he has something like this. So he's more hunched back, hunched forward. Just move him. And this is also stupid. You need to move the entire stomach. Oh, okay. You you don't move the pelvic area. Uh, but yeah. But if I will go to a render, 
and real time render. This will basically uh, do a reference for me, so it will it will try to PBR render this this fella for me. I can reduce the environment light so it's not as as dark. It's not as bright. So let's say 52 or something like this. I will rotate it slightly. And you can see it's like really heavily overexposing, but at the moment I can just take it. So let's say I will take a print screen. Go back to PS. Turn off the full screen mode. I won't save it because there's like no need for it to save it. And already the thing is really helpful because as you can see, uh, even though I messed up the, I mirrored the placing of the arms, but it does not really matter that much. Yeah, I mirrored the entire painting actually at the moment. Uh, yeah, something like this. So this is the similar value. Uh, in this case, I can just like take colors from it, from this one, this part. And uh, the details, it's like, it really gives me like the information, for example, like this. I, I thought the top part of the leg will be like bright, but it turns out this part will be bright and this part will will be a bit darker, okay, the sun from me is a little bit more from up front and everything, but but yeah, as you can see, it, it gives me a lot of informations, even on details like the shadow, how I place the shadow on the head, I, I made it like this, it should go down, I have not a single clue what I was thinking, uh, okay, maybe the, my light source is a little bit up front, but it's almost identical to this one, so the the shadow definitely should go down. I just messed the the most basic thing that I could mess. And this is the reason why I can make the painting look better now. Because I will just make it darken. I will choose this, like let's say. Yeah, I will connect it at the moment, so later I can re reconnect it. Uh, now I can just make the entire thing a little bit more proper because the in this case the head will be casting a shadow on the arm and in this case i do believe the the right side of the arm will be in the self shadow but this area definitely should be darker yeah from the head and this area will be in the shadow from the rounding of a geometry because I can see it now and this area will be even darker and there will be a little bit more on the stomach a little bit more light on the stomach so this entire area will be lighter but I will make it ignore the darkest parts so I will only brighten up the the chainmail instead of the the things And yeah, and I can see, and this is like a really quick fix, but as you can see, if I zoom out, it makes much more sense. Now it seems to be a little bit more uh, not coherent, consequent in, in the things that I'm doing. So again, this is like a, a good type of a of a feedback that I can give to myself just by preparing a really simple 3D model and even for this skin hue even though it's a bit brighter than what I have uh, I, I kinda like it so for example as you can see the highlight in here I kinda have it in a similar place so yeah it does work uh, yeah because Pretty much everything that you can imagine is a box, just there are more cuts to the box, so everything that you can imagine you can place in a box and it's just how you will like shape the, the box, how many cuts you will do, how you will trim the box, so 
to achieve the shape that you want to that you want to achieve but for example as you can see it might be just the case for the for the material but the legs in here are like fully lit just just the material is is representing the the light a bit differently and now it's up to me to to decide how i want to proceed with it if i want to be if I want to just copy the reference that I have in there, or if I want to adjust it on how I think it should look like. Of course, I, I could like just copy it and call it a day, but maybe I would think that brightening the, like giving a highlight in here will actually work better. So. So this is definitely super helpful. Because sometimes you just yeah, you, you just won't be able to figure something out. It is just the way it is. Like the the art thing is our like again, it's not a rocket science, but it gets really complex really quickly and even faster it gets really overwhelming, especially for, for anyone who is just starting. I remember how overwhelmed I felt with a lot of the paintings that I was doing and I'm just keeping it cool and trying to figure things out logically is is the easiest way to to achieve what you want to achieve because again in this case it does not really reflect anything from the ground because there is like no ground in 3D I, I should make like a plane that is colored like a ground but in my case there's like a lot of like wheat or grass or whatever on the ground that will also reflect the the yellowish light so the reflection will definitely be visible in even in a dirty and rusty rusty metal it will like recolor it so also this is the reason why i have this like layer that with like this glow because it will globally recolor everything that i that, that i do have in there so so yeah so let me just do the do the legs. Yeah, and later uh, the 3D will help me with stuff like, for example, the ambient occlusion and everything. Because if I were to, uh, I could approach this painting in a really like this structurized manner. So I could add the the flat color layer, the flat the ambient occlusion layer, the flat texture layer, and everything, and just combine it. And most likely it will look perfectly fine. It will look even possibly better than, than I'm painting it right now. This is the way, for example, Naran Batan Garden Bolt is, is painting in this like really layered, structured way. That was a little bit too much for me at the moment uh, to do it this way, but yeah, it, it works, so yeah. And also the, for example, I can say that the metal that he's wearing is like rusty, dirty, it's it is reflective, but it's not as reflective as it should be. But again, to, to make it look like metal, I will just have to go over it several times, search for some better references, and yeah, just call it a day. And do some stuff like this that always works. So even if you're painting rusty metal, just add some highlights and and it starts to look like metal almost immediately or at least it starts to look more like metal than it used to because even though it's rusty the the spec the highlights will still will still appear there this is actually one of the most common feedbacks i get from my art director that i need to add highlights to the metal so it looks a bit more a bit more shiny But yeah, as you can see, the color on the cloth is almost identical, so you can just roll with it. This is kind of interesting that this, this layer is a bit darker. This light setup. I do believe the light source is also, I mean, it is much lower because you can see on the highlight. In my case, I wanted it to be a little bit more from the top, so I can just copy everything, but but you, you get the idea of what is going on here. Okay. 
du, 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 du. And later it's just like polishing and polishing and polishing. It's just like sitting and making it to look nice. So, so yeah. Now I'm also trying to be a bit more loose, so I don't really worry about the the exact lines that I have. I kind of just want to get the the values a bit more correct, so to speak. So it will just look a bit better. And if the light will look okay, the rest is, is a breeze. For example, this area will reflect a bit of a light from the top because it's like facing upwards. This edges will also reflect more of the of the sky. But the sides, especially the sides of metal, uh, will reflect the environment much more. It's the Fresnel, I believe it's pronounced the Fresnel effect that the all surfaces are getting reflective depending on the angle you are like looking at them. So for example, if you will take a, a piece of a wood and you will like really look from the side of it, at some point it will start to reflect the environment because just the light will bounce off. You will see the light bouncing off of the surface in a different manner. So the Fresnel is one of the things that always makes the entire process of drawing and painting much, much easier if you get a grasp, grasp of it on like what it is. And I always said it's Fresnel because there's, I believe, S in there. But as far as I learned quite recently, it's Fresnel. Like you don't pronounce the, the S. The S is silent. And so as you can see, if I remove it, the, the boots start to look okay-ish. They are not by any means perfect, but but they look okay-ish. And to work with stuff on stuff like this, it's always good to zoom out because if I would be working on this part like this, then I won't be able to see how it looks like, like from the back. When I zoom out, now I can like verify. I need this darker, this brighter, this darker, this brighter. And later if I have the core, like if if this is okay, then I can just go over it like 10 times and just like rework it. So for example, sky can reflect in here. Sky can reflect in here and in here. And it's always good to flip. If you flip, then there is a huge chance you will spot all the mistakes immediately. Because for your brain, this is like a brand new image. It never saw it. Especially after like looking at something for over like, I don't know, two or three hours. Then your brain will be like, wow, what is this? Why are there so many mistakes? Why it looks like shit? So as you can see, I can hide it, hide it, hide it. On the chain mail, I can make some changes. I can later also retexture it, so I, I don't really worry about destroying the destroying everything that I have in here. So I just want to generally adjust the entire character, and I want to move this. More like this. So now the structure feels a bit better, as you can see. It does now, it does not. It's to go a little bit to the side. But now I don't like the fact that. Well, this is also stupid. If you have something and you sometimes disconnect it, it will remove it. I'm not a huge fan of this almost tangent tangent finger, so I will like I will rotate it so yeah, but the asymmetry is still uh, the it's almost touching the thigh, which is not good. 
I want to move it a bit further away. Usually in painting you want to avoid like small gaps like this because shit's annoying. It will just distract everything and will bring the, the lack of balance to the entire thing. If you can avoid doing something like this without like destroying the piece then, then do it. The knee. Now I kind of want to add some more cloth to the character, so I'm just trying to just to add some things that will like break up the the perfect shape of of a leg or whatever. So, for example, uh, maybe he is wearing the and this also fixes the the problem with the the pelvic area. Maybe he's wearing some bandages and everything under the, the pants because, I don't know, protective like things to, I don't know, not destroy his ass cheeks. And also it can leave uh, some like details that will break the, the silhouette because the, the material will be like worn off worn out so yeah you, you get the idea small bolt and with stuff like this you don't really want to be like turbo precise and now if it will work in a small scale, so for example, if the light will work in, in a scale like this, is like this, if I will zoom out, it's, uh, zoom in, it's only a matter of like polishing it to to a higher degree, so it will look and read much better. I kind of like the face, but I feel the. The top part is a bit too like, not roundy enough. It's like it was pointy. And then this thing will be more like this. And I kind of wanted also to add, but I am not sure about it. This effect of the that you get sometimes in a photo where the eye is like overexposed or something like this. This like glow in it. Because this dude is shooting, but it's not well. It's the wrong, wrong effect. I will try to later find a, a reference photo for it. Mm. Uh, and on the stage you can also, like if the light is figured out, you can just make things protrude more. For example, I feel the... Uh, the armor on legs will be thicker, because there is also a need for the calves to, to fit into all this mess that he has tied around him. So I just like need to to add some thickness to it. And if you add thickness, then break up the silhouette of it. So it will simply look a bit a bit better. Oh yeah, now this hand looks like it's way too bright. The bracelet does not really fit to this to this guy's hand, so I will remove it. 
but I will tie him around with all the bandages around his arm and hand and whatnot. I actually had a really similar wrap around my, my finger when I managed to damage it. And this will also get a rid of a bit of the hand that I have to paint, so it's like a profit type of a thing. And the most important part for me in this case is the fact that the, the hand is not as bright as it used to be. So do I have it? I I kept I keep this on a separate layer because I'm not sure about this channel, but yeah. I will try to add the same thing in here. So he will have his hand like wrapped in the bandages. And even the stuff like this, I, I don't know why I have not thought about it earlier. Earlier, Some of the bandages will just hang, slightly hang off of him, like much more. Since he's like not the brightest, the, the thing will untie on him. And most likely he will have like many layers of, of the bandages like just wrapped around him, so. Let me check the reference of him. And there is this green thing. Oh, one of the things that I don't really like also when I'm looking at Ritz right now is like this. This shape in here seems to be really artificial. It kind of does not show that he is on the skinny side on, on his stomach. Something like this. Right. There can be some patches of metal all over him. Okay. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the ears. Should I bend them more? No. Or maybe yes. Warp. Control H so I can just distort them. Because they were like really spiky and I don't really. I mean, they were spiky, but in this unnatural looking shape. So I want to make them a little bit more natural looking. For something like this. This will the artifact on his face. Probably. I think. I wonder what it will say for outer color. Yeah, the outer color make him much more blue. I prefer him to be a bit more red. Outer contrast actually works nice. And outer tone. Outer tone also works nice, so I will keep it. Yeah, so it will be everything for today. Uh, yeah, it kind of moved forward. So as you can see, this is where are we, and this is where we were. So let me take a screenshot compare it so we can see where we are at and where we were oops it's always nice to see the progression of a piece yeah so the the hue slightly changed i do believe for better uh, a lot of more things is happening on him i need to most likely make it a little less busy on his forearms or to figure something out that he could have 
and yeah the legs are looking okay soon i will add the, the grass all, all around him and it will be just like a polishing type of a thing just left so i will just sit and, and polish the shit out of him so it will look cool so yeah thanks thanks everyone for for tuning in i will try to i will try to stream a little bit more often and frequent and yeah this is if yeah if you can just like the video leave a comment after the stream ends so it will help the algorithm to i don't know like it to push it forward or whatever and leave a like subscribe bell thingy and all the other things that you can do so yeah uh, thanks for watching and see ya have a good day